Lisa Walton and welcome to Quilt Stories. Today I'm very pleased because I'm chatting with my very good friend Deborah Louie. Deborah and I have known each other for over 20 years. We have spent many hours together, usually um, over a machine where she's showing me how to do things because she is just the most amazing quilter but knows everything there is to know about sewing machines. So welcome Deborah. Hi Lisa, lovely to see you. How are you? I'm good. Isn't it a shame we live in the same city and we're on the same time zone for once. We still don't yeah. see each other because of this dreadful virus, but great to see you on Zoom anyway. And here we've got Deborah's beautiful quilt called Glamorous Clams. Now we've got a few variations on this one that we're going to talk about today, but I'd love you to just tell me about why you came up with this design and what it means for machine quilters. Or machine stitches, actually. Thanks, Lisa. Um, it's just a delight to be here. I'm really excited to share um, some of my work with you today. Glamorous Clams started, I was always teaching domestic machine quilting, and that was fabulous. Then I wanted to spread my, um, enlarge my repertoire, so to speak, and my passion for uh, machine work. I thought, what's another way that we can get the most out of our sewing machines? And me, like a lot of people, didn't use all those buttons, all the decorative stitch buttons. And then I started doing that and I was just thrilled with the results that I was getting for the decorative stitches. So I came up with this pattern of the clamshells and there's lots of raw edges there. So there's little arches there of different colours. So all of those raw edges are, are decorative stitching opportunities. And so when I started, I, I used the default settings and then I changed the default settings. I changed the length, the width, mirror reversing, elongating. And all of a sudden I got completely different looks from the original setting from the machine. And it came up with this beautiful project. There's cushions and there's big quilts and there's wall hangings with this. And what I'm just aiming with this beautiful work is to encourage others to use their um, domestic machines with the stitches or the decorative stitches that are on there to get the most out of their sewing machines really. So we've got a second one here and we're going to talk about this one a little bit later but the decoration is actually in the quilting of the clamshells not so much the decorative stitches is that right? That's correct so this is actually called COVID clams um, and here I have worked with the same template and turned uh, uh, there's a lightweight interfacing that's stitched on the curve and I've turned it and then I blind hemmed it so I don't do anything by hand my um, hand sewing skills aren't very good so I have blind hemmed it on the machine which is a standard stitch that all sewing machines have I've reduced it right down so it's tiny and I've used a clear monopoly thread and once they were all stitched down, I then ditched each of the clam shells. And then I just wanted to put a few little inspirational words in the quilting. And sometimes you can see there, there's spirals, there's leaves, there's flowers as well. Not on all of them. Sometimes I just wanted the, the fabric to do the talking. There's a few secret little messages in there. Instead of decorative stitching, I have used machine quilting in there. So there's a few different ways that you can do this. Beautiful one block quilt of clamshells. I just love it. Okay, we're going to be seeing that one in a little bit more detail uh, a bit later on. What's this? When I'm working on a decorative stitch, you can see up the top there, there's a number 711. Well, that's the stitch on my sewing machine of that particular stitch. It's a star stitch. And I would say 99% of machines have that star stitch. So that's when, when I'm face-to-face -face teaching or online teaching, I love to show you this stitch first. We look at the rhythm of the stitch, how it's formed, and then we play with it. So we've lengthened it, made it longer. I've made it shorter. When you make it shorter, you can see on that, the line on the left-hand side there, all of those stars are really close together and it looks like a totally different stitch. Mm. When you reduce the width, when you reduce the length, when you make them wider, make them closer. So there's so many different looks I have got out of one stitch, which is on most sewing machines. And I've got so many different looks that I could apply to my edges of my clamshells, or in fact, any applique that I want to on raw edge applique. So it's just showing you that one stitch 
has so many different looks. Absolutely. Mm, it's quite fascinating, isn't it? That one stitch can look so different. Here we have a close up mm -hmm. of you doing that stitch. Now you're working on a Benina at the moment. I know that's your machine Correct. of choice, but yes. you don't have to have a Benina to create these amazing patterns and things, do you? No, I love to encourage you to use whatever sewing machine you have. I am a Benina ambassador um, and that's why the um, Benina machine is here. But as a tutor, I've got to learn all the machines and they all do different things. But basically, they're all sewing machines, so they all have a, a length and a width. Sometimes the stitches are a bit different, but I'm showing here that I'm using a open toe embroidery foot that all brands and machines have because you need a really good view of what you're doing. And I'm using this uh, Star 711, and you can see it's on that raw edge between the gray spot and the white. So it's really important to have a good um, viewing. So we need an open toe embroidery foot. And I'm stitching just on a clamshell, a single clamshell. So I don't prepare them all and then iron them onto the base. I'm stitching on one little clamshell at a time. So my stabilizer or my fusible paper is still underneath there as I stitch. So use fusible paper. So I'm assuming you use um, Lysafix in Australia and Wonder Under for the States. Bonda yes. is the UK version. Um, this is a collection of three of them that I've got um, the same stitch and I've done the, the star stitch in different positions and there I'm using a 12 weight cotton thread and the different weights of cotton give you different looks for that same stitch. That's lovely. So you would, you would just get a selection of them and, and do that same design on a few of them and then move on to a different size, shape, pattern, whatever to do another set of clamshells. Correct. I tend to get the most out of one decorative stitch, say 711, and I change the size, the width, the length, the elongation, and change the different colored threads before I go onto a new stitch. So you might be tempted to say, if you've got a white thread in there, to change the stitches but it's better to get the most out of one stitch change it because you know the rhythm of that stitch really yeah. utilize it with different colored threads then move on to the next stitch pattern and apply yeah. that to different clamshells this is very thick thread isn't it uh, it's beautiful at 12 weight cotton thread and this is a side stitch so the star stitch was a center symmetrical stitch and this one mm. is a side stitch and you can see where the needle is placed to the left of the foot. So that means the raw edge has got to be to the left of the foot. There's also a feature on a lot of sewing machines, which is a single stitch only. So when you stitch only one of those, I'll call it a little fan, one fan, you stop at the end of the fan, then you pivot your fabric to then stitch another fan. So it's a feature on a lot of machines that you ask it for one repeat only. So then you're always on that beautiful raw edge. If you stop and pivot means lift up the foot and turn midway through a pattern, it gets distorted. So it's a beautiful feature to have, which is one repeat on a machine, on a, on a stitch. And what's that underneath the template? That is stable, stabilizer. It's a really heavy weight stabilizer. So I can take the paper off, the fusible paper off, just pop the stabilizer on, stitch on that. And then once it's all finished, then the stabilizer is cut away from the background, but it's always left, as you can see here, you can still see that the stabilizer is left underneath the stitches because I still want the stitches nice and, and strong and flat, but it's a cheap heavyweight stabilizer. Okay. It's not a fusible, it's just a place um, behind. Um, if it was fusible, it'd stick to it and it'd be really hard to remove it. So it gets removed from everywhere except where there's a decorative stitch. They're centre patterns, aren't they? That's a centre pattern. The one that's under the machine is a satin pattern. So on most machines, there's a whole range and they're usually in folders or in groups, the different stitches. So you might have a group of satin stitches, a group of flower stitches together on your machines. This is a group of satin stitches and the first one is an arrow. And firstly, what I've done is made the, the width, the size, the width that I want, and then the length that I want. And I've got a, a shiny flat thread there. 
And the length that I want is really important because I want it nice and dense. And once I've got that satin stitch lovely and dense, it shrinks up the shape of the triangle. And another feature on a lot of sewing machines is elongation. So once you've made it dense, you elongate it back to the original length and bang, you've got a beautiful stitch. And the satin stitches usually are my favorite. I just love them. So this is midway me doing that um, triangle stitch there. That's a lovely stitch. It's gorgeous, isn't it? It's called a grass stitch. I've used a, a rayon thread there, gold, and I've used the grass stitch. I flipped it to the left-hand side and then I flipped it again to the right-hand side. So using a mirror reverse, which is a feature on most sewing machines. And then there's a line in between. So every sewing machine has got a triple stitch and it's usually on the front of your utility stitches. And that's a stitch that goes forward, back, forward. So it stitches three times, a straight stitch, so I've triple stitched in the gap there and it just looks really classy all with that gold rayon thread. That's a real oh. wow one, that one. Yeah. <laughs> Beautiful. So we've got some templates here. I think we can mention now that this is actually a skill building book that's available that you have and it comes with the template. It does. There's four templates that comes with, um, come with the book. Uh, it's a book that it's called Glamorous Clans Benina, Benina Special Edition as well as a Glamorous Clams Rainbow Edition. So the Rainbow Edition is generic, any brand of sewing machine, but the Benina one is specifically for Benina sewing machines. So I address all brands of sewing machines. Right, you definitely are a machine whisperer, aren't you? Oh, yeah, the main thing is clean your sewing machine and oil it. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, I, I have to admit that um, I had a machine once and I took it to the um, to get serviced and when I went to pick it up, the um, service guy said, look, I hope you don't mind, but I had to take a photo of the inside of your machine because I've never seen anything so awful and I shared it with all my other technicians. Oh, and, um, Lisa. Yeah, a little bit embarrassed. It was many years ago, but that was definitely a lesson learned and I no longer have that machine, but um, yeah. yeah, a little bit embarrassing. Now I'm much better at looking after my machine. Oh, so here we have a collection of your clams, beautifully decorated. What a lovely range of patterns. They're great. And, yeah, they are beautiful. And all of our sewing machines, if you've got, you know, a lot of decorative stitches can do that. And it's just so much, it's really enjoyable. So many students just going to send me photos I'm so delighted about what's on my sewing machine I have no idea you can see I've got some decorative stitches in the middle of some of the large arches let's look on this left hand side here there's a flower pattern in the middle of the dark red because some of the patterns decorative stitches don't cover a raw edge because they don't have a straight line and it's such a shame not to use them so I create larger areas um, where I can place those or down the middle of the tiny little one, the vertical decorative stitch. So there's not too many places that I haven't put a stitch in, Lisa, <laughs> as you can see. <laughs> you did say they were fusible on the back of the clamshell. So this is you actually putting it into place on your back background fabric. Correct. So once they all are decorative stitched, and the beautiful thing is because you're only working on a single one. So if you do make an error on a clamshell you're not happy with it that's okay toss it away I usually make it feel extra just in case of I do make an error um, so if you had ironed them all on to your background before decorative stitching the whole project would have been ruined this way you know if you've ruined only one clamshell it, it's okay we just replace it with another one so they're all um in line here and now i'm ironing over the top and getting them ready then to do their top stitching which is here and it's underneath the machine there and i did a um a big heavy satin stitch i'm working from the top to the bottom so you can see that the clamshells are turned they've still got a stabilizer, new stabilizer behind them. The clamshells are turned. I don't want to sew, well, I can't sew sideways, so I have to turn them. And I'm working top to bottom and I'm putting a big heavy satin stitch on that very outside edge. You don't actually just say, okay, well, I'm expert in clamshells now, do you? <laughs> They're sort of one of those things that you just um, love to do. 
And once you're used to and enjoying your sewing machine, well then here is a collection of cushions which are stitched mandala. So they're all working with 12 weight cotton thread and all with decorative stitching. So they're um, beautiful little cushions that using the decorative stitches in just different ways that a hand embroiderer would use. I like to use the machine as you're getting that same sort of look. And I've got a couple of pom-poms there and I love making pom-poms. This looks a very traditional, amazingly hand-stitched quilt, but it's not, is it? No, this was a few years ago, as you can see, I look quite a bit younger, but this is a quilt that I made for my sister and it's all machine stitched, it's all machine blanket stitched. And I've, what I've done is a very fine blanket stitch. And when you do go and experiment on your machine and, and try all the stitches, you'll find some beautiful blanket stitches there. And this one is all color on color. So it's yellow blanket stitch on the yellow, red on the red and so forth. And then I have trapuntoed the background. So the blocks are then repeated. The applique blocks are repeated in my trapunto quilting. And that was a very nice one. A couple of nice ribbons on that one for my, my beloved sister. So it was um, um, a nice right. gift. <laughs> and this one is gorgeous, lovely bright colors. Thank you. Um, this one is all decorative stitching. And if we could get up a little bit closer, um, we could see that I have used so many different decorative stitches in there. That was a very early one for me. I stitched on individual flowers. And once the decorative stitching was done inside the flowers, I then applied it to the background. All the leaves have got beautiful decorative stitching in them. You just get hooked. Once you really love using your sewing machine, uh, I, I just love working with applique and my decorative stitching. So it's a nice bright one. The flowers, do mm -hmm. you do the decorative stitches before you add them to the quilt? The same as the clamshell. So the decorative stitching is done on an individual flower and then it's applied to the background when the inside has been done. It's too hard to turn a big quilt round and round. The very outside edge, I have free motion applique. So it's all colour on colour and um, I have free motion stitched the very last outside edge. And I noticed there are some clamshells down the bottom. Is this a starting point for your clamshell idea? Um, yeah, it was actually. They were blind hemmed applique. So um, that blind hem stitch again with the clear thread gets into me these clamshells. I just love it. <laughs> I have it's them. A great shape. <laughs> Everybody has a shape they like, don't they, Lisa? <laughs> um, yes. So what we have here is the cover of your Glamorous Clams Benina Special Edition book. Where is this available? So this is available from participating Benina uh, dealerships, um, Australia, New Zealand and worldwide. There are some stores in America and the UK um, that have this as well. So it's it's something that I've done for the Benina dealers that they can then teach in their stores. It comes with clamshells and the book. So I'm really proud of it. The clamshell templates, you mean? Yes, the clamshell templates come with the book. I know in Australia they could probably get it from the Benina stores. Also, can they get it from your website? They can get the generic one, which is the rainbow clams from my website, which has the exactly same information and the templates. The Benina version is available from Benina, um, participating Benina dealers. Yeah. You need to nag your Benina dealers to, to get this in if they don't have it. They, yes, um, please. Have yes, please. They need to contact me and all the details, you know, I'm going to be at the end with Lisa um, and get them to contact me and I can sell it to them wholesale. And then you can have sure. it in your store. Excellent. So this is just part of the Benina version because these are Benina screens. Yes. Yes. So this shows the inside the book, like all the features, all the buttons, how do you, when do you, and why do you use these buttons? So within the project of the Glamorous Clams, I have explained how and when and why to use the features. And I've screenshot all the features. So if you follow the book exactly as I've done, you will get a beautiful project exactly the same as mine. I think it's a really unique book project that, I'm, as I said before, I'm really proud of. I can understand that. So this is the star stitch you were talking about at the beginning, with where to find it, what foot to use, and variations. Excellent. That's right. Very, yep, variations of that stitch, what threads to use, what bobbin thread to use, how to adjust your tensions. 
how to pivot, um, when to pivot and so forth. So it's basically everything that I teach in, in a book. Now, I know that you also have an online class that teaches you how to use your Benina. And I've learned heaps from, from going through it. Uh, so you'd like to talk a little bit about that online class? Sure. Thanks, Lisa. It's an on-demand class. It's about, I think, about four hours long, four or five hours long. And I go through a Bonina machine with you of how to use it. And the clever thing that they do is that the features are symbols and the symbols are on all of the machines. So it doesn't matter what model you have. I work on a 770 on there, but it doesn't matter the symbols are the same throughout all the models of the machines. So I show you all the favorite features of mine, how to use them, step-by-step, step, walking foot, BSR. Um, so it's a lovely class. It's a really popular class and um, it's on the website, yeah. Great, yes, I've, I've learned heaps, I must oh. admit. I also have a 770, so it's perfect oh, Fantastic. That's the garden one again. That's just a full full size of the clamshells going around. Yeah, there was a nice ribbon on that a few years ago as well. <laughs> I think uh, most of your quilts have nice ribbons on them, Deborah. <laughs> Thank you. This is a, a, a from a Baltimore quilt that I did a quite a long time ago, and I'm going to remake that as a new version and have another new book with it. That's showing you blanket stitch, and that's all colour on colour. Again, the blanket stitches are a re really useful stitch. It's all colour on colour and with the machine quilting in the background. The feathers are there. Everything has got machine quilting behind it. When I do it, um, free motion quilting really dense behind my applique, the applique pops up beautifully. It becomes really dimensional. It's, it's a fabulous look. But this one's a bit confusing. It looks to be three identical quilts. <laughs> this is called COVID clams so I've only just finished these and I'm really grateful that you know I'm well and healthy over these times the mind was a little bit confused I couldn't concentrate on too much and I've always wanted to make a clamshell quilt for my family but I wasn't going to put the detail of all the decorative stitching but this turned clamshell and what I did, I didn't just make one of every colour, I made three of every colour. So they were on my design wall, all three were pinned um, behind each other. And as I made one row of one quilt, I made three rows for the three quilts. Oh, and I, wow. yeah, yeah, but I couldn't concentrate on much more. So they were actually really perfect. It was the perfect time. And I took them down to the beach and took this really beautiful photo and then I presented them to my children and their partners and now we all were snuggling in, in our own homes under COVID plans and it's um it's a nice it's a nice thought I've quilted um in the ditch for each of those clans but also I have quilted inside some of the clan shells some really inspirational wording for each of them special wording that means something for them and me and it's a it's a cute little quilt it's actually a book um, that's going to be on the website as well so this is how you make the, this is how you made your covid clams so you've used the same template as you had previously correct and in the book if you don't have the plastic templates there is template pattern there so you can see that I've made a cardboard version of it that template of the clamshell is drawn onto very lightweight fuse uh, lightweight interfacing then the interfacing is pinned on to the fabric I stitch the top with a straight stitch cut away the excess and then turn it so it's um it's this is him me with my quarter inch foot just with a small stitch and a 50 weight cotton thread just stitching the top so I think each of them, each quilt had 362. So 362 times three. So you can see it, it took a while. <laughs> so I've just chained them all together. We, we've, had, we've had a while in COVID. Yes, we have. <laughs> so it was no stress. Yeah, it was just really nice and easy to do. Then I'm cutting away the excess around the arch, uh, the curve and then turning them right way around. So it's a beautiful turned edge. If you don't want to machine it, you could always then needle turn. And here they are again, and they're just they beautiful. Yeah. Gone in and got a little bit more detail, which is just lovely. Yeah, with the free motion quilting. While I was ditching um, with free motion quilting, I then came in and did some decoration on the clamshell above. 
So it's actually, you're working top to bottom, the clamshells would be on the side quilting. And then I added leaves and flowers and some wording and stuff. I, I raided my um, stash because I couldn't get out into the shop. So really nice, beautiful, bright colors, um, some fabrics that were really special to me that I bought in Houston last year. Yeah, it's nice and bright, happy. I needed brightening up and happening, um, happening up. That's not a good word, but um, cheering up. Yeah. <laughs> That was great. You've actually been really busy in this time, though, haven't you? You've had a few major projects that are going to be launched next year and also some more classes that will be on your website very soon. And all the links to all of Deborah's classes, books, etc. cetera, um, please just check them out down below because you're, you will learn so much. I certainly have learned heaps from certainly the Benina book. It's um, been very helpful in, in how to <laughs> um, do all those things and press buttons that you didn't know actually existed. So <laughs> it's, it's been great, Deborah. I've really enjoyed it. And I've actually, um, I'm vaguely tempted to go and press some of those decorative stitch buttons as well and see what I can create. Because as you can <laughs> see, I have a Benina 770 behind me. So I want to thank you very much for, for your time today. I know that this year has been a bit of a, a pain for you because you were you were booked to do some international work, which is such a shame that everybody's international work got got changed. But hopefully uh, next year, when we're all allowed to travel again, uh, yeah. your face is going to pop up in um, a lot of international quilt shows. And I hope that also your Benina and and the generic books will also start appearing all over the world mm. after this video because i'm sure people are going to go and check them out and go yes please yes please <laughs> oh thank so, you Lisa. it's been wonderful to be here and i'm so excited that you're going to go on your machine and check out the stitches yay have fun <laughs> <laughs> yes indeed indeed it's better it's better than all those phone calls where i have to ring you up and say oh deborah oh i've stuffed this up what what can you do to help me and, anytime um, I'm really <laughs> that's right. what friends are for <laughs> absolutely okay so everybody i hope that you've enjoyed this video and please subscribe there's a nice big subscribe button there you can click on and um, if you do a thumbs up then also um youtube likes thumbs up and they also like comments and i'm sure you can think of some great things to say so it would really help me if you subscribed and did the thumbs up Thank you so much, Deborah, and My everybody, pleasure. bye for now. Bye.